CataractCoach.com. Cataract Quiz, what kind of IOL was here? Look carefully. What's that shape? That's from a silicon plate haptic lens. So this capsule is very phimonic. Zoner support is terrible. So certainly is just removing the entire remnant of this capsule. Get all that out of the eye. Beautifully done. Now looking here in the back of the eye, there is the lens. That's a plate haptic lens, typically made of silicone, at least here in the USA. And that lens was placed in the capsular bag. In fact, the very first toric elbows we had here in the USA were made of this style, the plate haptic lenses. Now, surgeon has brought the lens up here towards the anterior segment of the eye, grabbing it with forceps, and let's see if you can remove this. Now, if it's a silicon lens, remember, it can tend to be very, very slippery. The silicon lenses, especially if they're coated in viscoelastic, are very slippery. So here, surgeon is bringing the lens up in the anterior chamber. There it is. And let's see, can this be folded or compressed, let's see what's gonna happen here. And let's see, wrote up, just pulling it out. Okay, kind of pulls on itself or folds on itself. All right, lens is gone. Now, looking back here, while they do that vitrectomy, let me tell you about the Cataract Coach Podcast, the top podcast in all ophthalmology for a reason. It teaches you to be a more successful ophthalmologist. I promise you'll love it. Now, looks like also, okay, membrane peel going on. Look at that, membrane peel here over the macula. That looks pretty good. Beautifully done. That kind of always reminds me of a capsular rexus. Oh, there's a bit of a macular hole there, per perhaps. And let's take a look here. A little laser action going on. Now you say, what about retina stuff? T tell us more cataract coach retina stuff. Well, guess what? Retinarounds.com is coming. There is going to be a new channel for retina associated with cataract coach. You stay tuned. I've got a fantastic retina surgeon who's going to help with that. Now, Let's go back here. Here comes the viscoelastic now, protecting that coronal epithelium. And surgeon is marking off. And let's see the technique here. I'm watching the video for the first time with you. Let's see, making some marks there. Are we going to put in a, a single piece lens? Now, there's not going to be a Mane procedure. So perhaps in this situation, the surgeon is going to do somewhat of a Conor Brava technique. So let's see, there's the lens. Now, going inside and looks like piercing the eye well to make sure you have a good central piercing. Look at that. So, yeah, the haptic optic junction, a sutures pass through. That's a 7-O proline. And then, let's see, a little bit of a flange created there. And so here we go. That's going to help really fixate that lens. What about the other side? Are we going to rotate the lens around? And here we go. Suture being threaded through there. So using forceps there to thread that suture out through a small bore needle. And now getting that lens rotated, probably going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So very interesting. I like this technique here of piercing the IOL haptic junction. And it's done externally outside the eye, right there, outside, just outside the incision there. The incision could actually help stabilize the lens for you. And there's that 7 proline being passed. A flange will be created on the other side. And then perhaps going to be some sort of Conor Brava type technique to uh, uh, fixate this to the sclera. Now, you probably don't need those big, long haptics here. In fact, it's important that you don't get those haptics entangled up with that 7 proline. So make sure you tuck those haptics behind the IOL after you fixate it. So here we go, threading in that 7 proline through the hollow bore needle. I'm going to pull that out of the sclera here. So looking pretty good here. Now, of course... There we go. Now we'll pull both these very gently. And look at that. You're going to get the lens in good position here. There's one. Here's the other. And get that lens centered up. And then you can create some more flanges. Here we go. Holding that with the forceps. Going to cut off that suture and then create a bit of a flange. Make sure you get that flange tucked within the sclera. And let's see. Now when you do these lens calcs, assume in the bag power. But you know what? I'd also add at least a half or one diopter because this lens may sit a little more posterior than you're anticipating. And if that's the case, that effective lens position is a little more posterior, a little closer to the retina, which means you need a little bit higher power. And plus, it's always a benefit to have a little bit of myopia. And so now there are the haptics being tucked in, nice and easy. Very interesting technique here. Have not seen this before. And now the lens looks beautifully centered. Wow, neat case here. So looks like uh, air bubble going in there, a little more retina work, and end of the case, taking out the trocars. Interesting to see. Let's see what the post-op looks like. Yeah, it looks good. Lens is going to be beautifully centered here, and that's going to be very stable for this patient. 
And here you go. Post-op picks. Looks great. Beautifully done. Wow. Fantastic. Remember, check out that Cattle Coach podcast everywhere where you find podcast services.